Welcome everyone on Zoom and on YouTube to this fifth talk in our Open for Discussion series. My name is Emilie Banville. I am a member uh, of the Curatorial Research Collective and I'll be moderating today's session. So the, the Curatorial Research Collective, the CRC, is based at the Eindhoven University of, Te of Technology and is uh, an interdisciplinary research and design group set up in 2016 which critically engages with the theories and practices of architecture culture, questioning their multiple discourses and broader societal frameworks. So for our 2021 talks, we decided to open up a series of discussions on what we all uh, undoubtedly recognize as a persistent problem that architecture has with diversity and representation, and especially how it still remains much observable in architecture schools and architectural professional practice studios and offices, and thus how it is uh, deeply embedded in our built environment. So over the past three weeks, our talks have addressed uh, diversity and representation within architectural uh, education, both in terms of cultural, racial, and ethnic identity, as well as in terms of um, diversity of sexuality and gender. Last week, my colleague, Michael Andres, um, discussed these same issues of gender and, and sexual representation within the architectural profession. So these talks are all available via the CRC website or directly on the YouTube channel of Casa Vertigo, which is the CRC's home uh, gallery in Eindhoven. So these talks are, are part of an ongoing research project developed by the CRC with uh, a number of external partners, including a new institute in Rotterdam, in order not only to uh, understand these systemic conditions, but uh, more importantly, to collectively propose, craft, and enable sustainable solutions to these urgencies. This fifth talk, entitled Super D from Super Dutch to Super Diversity, was initially developed in relation to um, a very basic principle or saying, according to which you can't be what you can't see. In 2000, architectural historian Bart Lotsma published a book called Super Dutch, New Architecture in the Netherlands, which paid tribute to an internationally shining golden generation of architectural firms of the 90s, largely composed of Dutch-born white men, illustrative of the growing self-affirmation of Dutch architecture at the time. And then Super Dutchness rapidly conquered the collective imaginary and pervaded notions of identity and inclusion. Today, two decades or so later, in a global context of ever increasing super diversity and thus of escalating cultural and racial equality struggles, and within a professional industry and community which is largely unrepresentative of architects from BAME and BIPOC backgrounds, um, how could we possibly make sense of super Dutchness otherwise? How could such self-referential perspective be reinterpreted in accordance with the actual multi-layered identities and, uh, and heterogeneous realities of the contemporary landscape of uh, practicing architects today in the Netherlands. So taking this uh, potential transition uh, of super Dutch into super diversity as a starting point for engaging discussion, the following talk will address notions of identity and representation along with cultural, ethnic, and racial diversity, or, or lack of thereof, within the architectural profession. Together with today's guests, Felix Madrasso and Lada Ash, we will be reflecting on this uh, team while questioning um, the resounding impacts of super Dutchness in the Dutch context. Both our speakers will have um, 10 minutes or so to present themselves and their work in relation to today's main topic, after which we'll have a, a conversation with the public. Uh, so I would ask all of you to please uh, join me in uh, warmly welcoming our two speakers and do not hesitate to take part and contribute to the conversation um, later during the Q&A. And so for those watching on Zoom, please type your comments and questions directly in the Q&A box. Uh, so they can be uh, addressed properly throughout uh, the discussion. Our first uh, speaker is Felix Madrazo. Felix was born in Mexico in 1972. He is an architect, researcher, and lecturer. He is a partner at IND, which stands for International Design, 
a founding member and researcher at Super Sudaca and lecturer in various university, including TU Delft and the Academy van Balkons in uh, Amsterdam. Our second speaker will be Lara Ast. Uh, she is a Croatian Dutch architect and urbanist, and she established Bureau Lada in 2010. Bureau Lada is a cross disciplinary Amsterdam based studio. Uh, with focus on architecture, although LAD L A D A stands for Landscape Architecture Design and Action. Uh, Bureau is currently active between Amsterdam, Venice, and Cairo, and the practice is testing the social capacity of the discipline through action, performative, and built interventions. The studio collaborates with practitioners from the fields of ecology, science, art, heritage, and sociology and has been selected for the parallel program of the Dutch Pavilion at the current Venice, Venice Architecture Biennial. So um, let us uh, first welcome and listen to Felix. Felix, the screen is yours. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction, Emily. Um, let's um, see if that works fine. I hope yes. Everything cool? Perfect. All right. So um, first, uh, when very quickly, when when we talk about when we hear the, the issue of race and gender and identity, it remind me a bit um, that um, I was in Morocco and many people were telling me, "Ah, oh, you look like our king. You look, you are very similar." And then I thought, "Oh, that's really nice." And then I was in another part of Morocco. And I had to take a long taxi ride. And I tell, told the taxi driver, ah, by the way, the people told me that uh, I look like the king. And he, the guy said, we hate the king in this part of uh, the country. And I was like, OK. So, so sometimes identity could be a bit complicated. Uh, this is a picture of my, my grandparents. So you can more or less understand a bit the, how many Mexicans are kind of hybridization of hybridization of hybridization. Um, and uh, uh, I study at the Berlach Institute, uh, same as Lada, in, the, in Rotterdam. And we both, uh, uh, we both came probably for the same reason, to be in one of the best schools uh, that, uh, that had uh, Europe at that time, um, which was uh, uh, exactly a very uh, coinciding with this moment that uh, the Dutch architecture scene was going very, very trendy. Um, there was this book called Super Dutch that uh, made a, a, a big uh, scandal um, and uh, in which some of my teachers were actually appearing here, Vilares, Vinimas, and of course, OMA, etc. And uh, well, we don't go, have to go to the polemics because probably you already know them. But uh, our kind of a co coincidence in when I was studying at the Berla was that there were many Latin Americans and we decided to make a kind of counter counter alternative to the super Dutch, so we call the super Sudaka. And for, for, for people who don't know what Sudaka means, um, it's Sudaka is how uh, Spanish uh, uh, refer to the Latin Americans in a kind of pejorative way. So it's a kind of, it's a kind of insult basically. So we just kind of make fun of it. And, uh, and we also discovered as Latins that we didn't know anything about each other. We only knew the European architecture, but actually there were so many things to share with each other. So we, that's how we made the group. And then this is where I kind of, what we only knew were these kind of figures, which were heroic figures. And uh, we thought, okay, we could make something a bit different and maybe to be something more like this, uh, which could be more kind of anonymous and have a, a, a more freedom. And so it works more like kind of dispersion between all these uh, uh, architects from Latin America from, uh, that we met at the Berlach from Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, Peru, et cetera. Um, and we traveled and we did workshops and we did have many research. And, and we also discussed with each other what we should do. And we kind of hated the specialization of the world. So we thought we should not do this. We should not polarize between doing research uh, or doing practice or working for the poor or working for the rich, et cetera. So we thought we should just do everything. And we kind of kind of try to revisit the, the vitreous man and see if we could make something more like this. So uh, in which you will have planning and furniture at the same level as sociological or design or, and we could maybe, you know, uh, turn it into any kind of gender. So very quickly, I mean, I'm gonna, it's not, we're gonna talk about the projects, but one of the projects that we, we have been involved a lot is a research on the, on the impacts of masters in the Caribbean. 
Um, and then uh, I will not explain it, but basically um, this project um, uh, gave us a cer certainly an attention that uh, was kind of surprising. So we, we won the best entry award of the Rotterdam Biennale. Uh, you can see me here when I was having hair. Um, and then uh, it was kind of surprising. But so this opened the doors for other things. So some grants came, some invitations to other things came. And we started to do uh, several projects in, in, in the Caribbean to continue the research, which uh, uh, is, it, it's involved in, into a publication. We are also do uh, activities uh, with students, uh, such as direct architecture interventions in public space. Um, uh, so just give you a quick overview of what we do. Um, and then I also have a, an office uh, that I also uh, uh, founded with, uh, <laughs> with uh, my partner, uh, uh, Arman Agdogan, he's from Turkey. And the name of the office is called IND. And, uh, and uh, as if you live in the Netherlands, you, and if you are an immigrant, you, very, you're, you know very well what IND means. And IND means normally trouble and letters and, and, uh, and expiry dates and re renewing permits and stress. So we thought, okay, let's just make IND kind of our name. So this is my partner, Arman, and, uh, and, but of course, uh, IND is not uh, just appearance out of nowhere. Uh, there was a magazine who, uh, who kind of make a map of uh, offices from Rotterdam or, or from the Netherlands. And uh, it put us in this diagram in which, as you can see, apparently everybody comes from this guy on top, which is called OMA or Ren Kohas, which you see him in the right here. So after we did the Berlach Institute, I, I was working for, for him for, uh, for a few years. And, uh, and so it was actually kind of a school. And, and when, when people tell, tell you, yeah, but you're doing a Dutch architecture, I will always say, well, you don't know that uh, uh, who produces the, 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 this Dutch architecture of OMA. It's actually the office of OMA is fully international. So actually the teams which are the Dutch are the ones, the, the teams that REM doesn't want to meet. So it's a kind of, uh, uh, it's completely international uh, school. And uh, so you, you practice, you learn a lot in this kind of atmosphere. And then of course, after that uh, projects, we started our own office uh, with Arman. And uh, we were quite lucky. We won a international competition for this project uh, in Spain for social housing. We built it. It was uh, very surprising. It gave us a kind of energy to continue for the office. Uh, and then after that, we, uh, uh, we did another housing project in, in Turkey. And again, we got a surprise because we, we were nominated for the Miss Van der Rohe Award. So, so suddenly there was some kind of recognition that, uh, uh, that was a kind of appear in the horizon. Um, and then, uh, but we have never built anything in the Netherlands until very recently. And we did this project in collaboration with an artist, Eddie, Eddie Kaiser. And we thought, okay, we should just do a project that uh, involves uh, uh, kids and elderly people together. And we did a kind of playground, it's called Ring of Swings. And we built this in Rotterdam last year. So this is a kind of idea. And, uh, and one thing that we also did, uh, uh, which was very surprising for us was uh, we were invited to do a competition uh, against uh, some of the most famous offices that we admire, Sumimoto, Esnohet, et cetera. And we managed to, to win this competition. Um, and so what is interesting in this, in this headline from Arch Daily is that actually uh, for them is like a, uh, the, the most important thing is to actually tag all the other arch architects uh, uh, in, in the news because this is the most important thing that we have uh, won against this other big firm. So, uh, so this is, well, this is the design uh, and I'm not gonna talk about it. And it's, it's just recently been built. Uh, uh, we are finishing in this year, the, the, the project with the landscape. So we are kind of joking that, uh, well, one day we might have this, uh, our own croquette, our own croquis. Uh, <laughs> so that's about it. So thanks. I hope I didn't take too long, Blada. No, it was a perfect, uh, perfect uh, timing, Felix. Thank you for, um for your um, colorful and uh, very uh, yes varied presentation and I think you tackled many issues that we are gonna um, uh, discuss uh, later on um, so we can uh, welcome Lada now please Lada the the screen is yours okay it's perfect so uh, hello welcome thank you Felix for a very nice and uh, inspiring talk 
Um, here is a short text about Birolada that maybe you don't need uh, really to read, but uh, something that I made uh, with the bold letters is a multilingual lingual collaborative. So that's something which I, we, we personally, or we, me find interesting. Oh, how is it going on? Oh yeah, like this. Uh, what are my homes? My two homes are actually in Zagreb, where I was born, and Amsterdam, where I live. And then uh, during the course of time, there was like many more places, spaces, listening to voices, and somehow this is, uh, yeah, okay, it's a very Eurocentric uh, point of view map, so I actually have to work on some other uh, projection. But here's a list of um, areas where uh, I or we have been somehow engaged, whether in teaching or designing. And the uh, thing which we really cherish is curiosity and something that I'm uh, particularly careful about or want to learn more about it is nuance. And as an example, this is, uh, I come from uh, Croatia. That's uh, what one might uh, see as East Europe or Southeast Europe. This is one of the typical uh, housing blocks, very beautifully, richly designed in the split, uh, the Marseille of uh, Adriatic, as I call it. That's where my cousin lives. So you can see the view that she has on the bay and the island of Brac in the distance. Uh, so that's somehow uh, making things closer and, and having the nuance in between this wide area of building block in East Europe, uh, what one might have, and uh, seeing this view on the Mediterranean uh, brings in this notion of nuance, which I would like to invite everybody to indulge in. Here's another block. This one is in Marseille. And uh, we, at the time, went for a trip, uh, top-down, bottom-up cultural initiatives. And this is a banlieue in Marseille. You see the, the burnt car. And that was in 2010 when we also started the studio and uh, the basis of also this little document, Scramble City, uh, which made me wonder, what is the social agency of spatial profession? And there we've learned, and uh, this is just a little list of actors and agents which were actually engaged. So here you see Eddie Rama, which at the time was the uh, um, mayor of Tirana, now is the prime minister of Albania. And you see the cleaner in that banlieue who was actually cleaning that it becomes a little bit uh, less messy. So these are all social agents and that was for me quite instructive. Um, here is just two slides of voice skills and scales of materiality, like some things that we do with the studio. It's kind of on relatively small scale. This is the Dutch embassy in Ethiopia, which uh, I did uh, for Van Hammer and Mastbroek as a project architect. Um, and I won't go into the project. Uh, this is a garden in Cairo that we did just recently. You see that they are relatively small. What is uh, very interesting or important is to connect, to, to be there, to maybe make together and to learn from each other. Uh, this is a screenshot uh, of a very uh, secretly thing. This is a talk in between me and the microphotographer Wim van Egmond in preparation for this Venice Biennial. And uh, he's taking this incredibly precise micro photographs. So that's on one level, learning from, let's say, the, the scientists, sciences. Uh, here you see uh, our uh, Ugandan DJ uh, untangling the wool because we were making a, a woolen pavilion in Marrakesh for an uh, African crossroads seminar. So this physicality of making is something very important. Uh, here's an element of, of teaching. We have initiated a very nice studio, Holger Gladys, uh, also Berlach tutor who lives in Cairo. Uh, we from Amsterdam and his studio from Cairo uh, have done a communal studio in Ghana. So this was like this uh, to avoid binaries. Uh, a, an Egyptian group and European group or Am Amsterdam group came to Ghana for a design studio parallel course. And that was a really incredible learning uh, as, uh, and I would actually advise to everybody to avoid binaries. 
Uh, here's another learning studio we did in uh, Auckland University uh, with Esther McCready. And he, this uh, gentleman is the Maori chiefsman who had a very nice session with us asking where our roots are. So like positioning yourselves towards the nature and other species, which is something which we also sometimes uh, forget. Um, here is a drawing uh, by a student when we went in Cairo for a stu study trip for another studio. And you see that, you know, people, uh, uh, this almost every other way uh, uh, look alike, but then in the kind of uh, totally different setting and a totally different sense of urgencies uh, and the flat building with uh, cows on the eighth floor. And uh, for making of this garden that uh, I showed, we also, this is, by the way, the crew, the Birolada Cairo, the ladies, um, Sara, Doha, Rawan, and me, and the secret gentleman who was taking us around for a bit. Here, we also are talking about the intergenerational learning. Uh, yeah, he was really, uh, that was really interesting to listen to, kind of totally another voice. And uh, here we were going with the University of Amsterdam, uh, uh, Harm, who does have a head, but at the, for this presentation, I decided to focus on kind of real material contact with the other species and other textures, uh, researching the shallow waters. So um, what is actually my uh, thought of that, that it's good actually to start early if we are talking in the frames of education and here, two print screens from the magazine Parole saying that uh, talking about a school in Amsterdam where my son is going to Metis Montessori Lyceum in Amsterdam East, which was uh, called the Turkish school because there were a lot of Turkish children there. But at the moment is one of the, uh, what one can call truly mixed school with a not like a 10% of one and the rest is other group, but it's like really, really, mixed and quite an interesting program. And that is maybe where we need to, you know, start thinking if we are talking about education. So, uh, and uh, start now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lada, um, for this presentation. Um, I don't know um if um maybe before uh opening up to our discussion if uh you would like to to share your reactions and thoughts on each other's yeah. opening statement perhaps if you have any comments um no i can wait uh, i mean i'm very uh, I, I immediately wanted to react on the montessori part but i think we it's better to that you <laughs> direct a bit to the... i can dive i can dive directly in, uh, <laughs> okay. in the first question otherwise then um maybe uh, to to bridge uh today's um talk with the previous uh, ones about architectural education um let me ask you so i know that you both uh, studied at the berlaha uh, and Felix, you talked uh, briefly about it in your presentation. Um, how did the fact of being being taught by this uh, super Dutchies uh, generation, let's say, resonate uh, or not within your professional practices? And to what extent, to what extent, architectural practices, uh, and more broadly, and your both your respective ones. Um, have been transformed in the Netherlands since 2000, early 2000 in relation to uh, control diversity and this, uh, and this shift towards super diversity. How, how have you been positioning yourselves? Maybe this was a two part question actually, the first part about the, the, the teaching of the super duchies. You wanna start Lara? Uh, well, I can start, thank you, but it's, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I also read uh, the questions, to be honest, <laughs> in, the, in the chat. Uh, so maybe I mixed, uh, mixed a little bit, but uh, the Super Dutch has also uh, quite an uh, interesting intellectual basis, which somehow, um, in a certain way, also ruined itself. <laughs> 
uh, with the uh, production and the scale. Uh, so uh, with this, what I was talking about the nuance, I wouldn't kind of call uh, this is all bad and this would be now all good. Uh, also what Felix was saying, you know, there are a lot of uh, strong uh, and connections and interesting uh, elements connecting to this uh, idea, even though I'm particularly don't feel as part of uh, neither represented by the super Dutch, uh, maybe more annoyed to a, a slight <laughs> degree. Um, but there is some kind of victoriousness in there that I find uh, slightly problematic in a sense that it's a little bit elitist and that also how the offices run. I mean, I have not been working in literally one of these offices, maybe similar, because we all have to, you know, have our working experience somewhere. Um, but I have the feeling that the culture in Dutch offices, in the smaller Dutch offices for sure, is changing. I don't know how the culture in larger Dutch offices is changing. It's definitely super international. It's getting probably more and more international. Uh, but how the whole gender, uh, not only gender, but also uh, race and also like the working conditions, meaning also working hours and uh, payments, I'm not actually familiar. Uh, so in that sense, also I cannot say anything about that. And uh, there was this question, how did we find yes. or... Uh, huh? And, so, and, so. and uh, a question from the public. Sorry, Lada, I, I forgot to mention that I would uh, go directly with one of, of my questions that I had prepared, but we already have questions from the public from Andrea Verdecchia, who asks, uh, what are the limits um, as a non-Dutch people run office to enter the Dutch architecture market? How to surpass them? And also, uh, uh, um, she also uh, asked about um, any if if you have any active diversity policy within your practice. Uh, shall I go or Felix? Just go ahead. Lara. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we don't have actually. I am not very kind of uh, fond of the word policy. Uh, I work more uh, or I tend to work more um, on, based on the intuition and some idea of, of, of trust, but there is an intention and especially when you engage with other uh, spaces to also engage with people who come from other places and spaces. So indirectly, I would say yes, that there is a diversity policy and there is also, uh, but not without using the word policy. How to find your way through uh, not being Dutch in Dutch climate? I mean, we were in a way also fortunate to have been at the Berlach Institute where we have had direct access to a lot of our tutors and teachers who have had offices where you could then go and have your working experience. So that is helpful. Uh, what is uh, also helpful and what is of course now tricky for I think both Felix and me and Arman we don't have school friends, you know, and, and friends from the sport uh, club or something uh, that would come to us uh, and uh, say, oh, you're an architect, uh, maybe we can do something together. But yeah, that somehow uh, makes possible or makes it even urgent or necessary to try uh, find your own ways and your own commission. So uh, a lot of works are also outside Netherlands, but some are also here. And if you just keep, <laughs> keep going strong, uh, obviously also engaging in competition, especially in the, in the beginning phase, uh, but also uh, initiating your own projects based on the, let's say social or the other agenda. So ne not necessarily waiting for a client to come and ask you for something. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that I think is very important to break through the idea of an architect as kind of service manager that is waiting behind the table. This is already long time not happening, at least for majority of the architects that somebody calls you and uh, so um, proactive is I think quite interesting and profiling and in that sense, not everybody would activate in the same way. Well, I'm, 
I I have few few reflections a bit on on, on what has been put on the table. Like um, the first question, a bit uh, a bit about, back to what uh, you were you were asking, if we if the effect of this touchiness is still on the air or not. Um, uh, I think the the um, it has cooled a lot. And the is not so trendy anymore. People are not so surprised anymore. Almost they could be a bit annoyed or bored, as uh, as Lara says. At least uh, is not the only is not the only is dominant discourse for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and uh, and and that's kind of challenging, of course, because uh, a lot of the um, uh, let's say education and uh, and an idea of of uh, of how you approach architecture is a lot based on 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 the on the on the power of the concept uh, uh, in the in the in the Dutch culture and and at least uh, how uh, uh, has been uh, understood and and so suddenly other things start to have gain more power like uh, uh, materiality or uh, or uh, recycling or 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 actor uh, issues like Aslada was mentioning, other things which were not the the the, the classical, uh, let's say Dutch uh, school that uh, that uh, that uh, that is, uh, started a bit from OMA, and then I want to a bit reflect on on that because I think that the whole I kind of mentioned it already that OMA is a uh, uh, is the kind of the, the the epicenter of all of this super Dutchness, but uh, funny enough or ironically enough, they are, uh, as I mentioned, is completely anti-Dutch, and uh, and you could see that Ram when they, they, he will get very nervous the moment that the book appear with the super Dutch, he will get very annoyed or uh, by the name, but also uh, uh, when there was, for example, uh, an exhibition about uh, uh, GJP out this uh, Dutch architect. He was also annoyed by the way that they treat this architect as a kind of monument. He was saying he was not so important. Uh, all architects were more important. Nice was more important. And you could see the, that the office of REM like started with a partner which was Greek, etc. So he was uh, uh, not into this kind of nationalistic uh, uh, mm -hmm. discourse at all. And then in, in, in the office, everybody will be talking about all kinds of architecture from everywhere in the world, but nobody was talking about Dutch architecture. That was never. That was never the issue. So that's a bit for me. That it has. It has been kind of mystified that this is the, the Dutch school that everybody is kind of learned from OMA all of that. But OMA was not that. It was. It was fully international. So fully welcoming uh, uh, dis uh, discussions between uh, many people. So that I think it's uh, it's kind of interesting. Now another question from the from from what I saw in the in the chat is like. Do you guys see a kind of a restriction in the market? Of course we do. I mean, uh, we are immigrants at the end of the day, and 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 why will uh, a Dutch developer will call a Turkish or a Mexican? It's like a, it's like it doesn't make sense in their head, uh, and so they will not do it. And I don't expect them to do it. It's fine. Uh, I'm not kind of uh, frustrated about that. Uh, um, uh, the world is big, so we we try to do our things and. And, uh, and now we have some commissions in Holland, but actually uh, one was a competition and the other, and the other two are houses for, for, uh, for Turkish people because, you know, like, so also the Netherlands start to become not fully Dutch as well. And that's probably how we get, will eventually break this uh, uh, kind of, uh, 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 let's say, um, ceiling, you know, like uh, that yeah. uh, it's, uh, so I don't know, those are some of the initial reflections. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I saw something in the pass by also in the in the Q and A um, that relates to 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 one of my interrogations also. Uh, um, and Felix, what you were saying, uh, it seems to me like a super super Dutchness um, somehow wasn't uh, representative of the of the reality of the of the of the practice. Uh, and and is it at some point? Is it to some extent, was it a, a construct, a, a social construct? Um, and it relates to the question uh, uh, posed by uh, uh, Andrea once again, um, in which she asks, um, yeah, is, is, is there a danger 
a danger of super diversity as a concept. Also, you were talking about the power of the concept of uh, becoming and an, let's say imaginary construct uh, as well. Um, so uh, an element of, uh, uh, of, of discourse and of, of contemporary politics, of course, but um, what, uh, what, do we, what do we make out of it? Um, I read, I read, of course, I read a bit about uh, about, about the concept ahead of this uh, ahead of this talk, and there was this uh, a social scientist um, Nando Sigona who um, who speaks to, um, clearly of super diversity in terms of opportunities and challenges, and um, he defines it as a kind of safety net against the idea of producing a very homogeneous and monodimensional vision of the world. Um, which I thought was interesting. So, what what would you what would you say are the opportunities within the architectural profession um, that are brought about super diversity? So, a more diverse um, uh, society, Dutch society, which which like Felix was mentioning, is is no longer so homogeneous as uh, as it was before. Are there more opportunities or more challenge? Um, challenges. You also, yeah, you also talked about the the the, the challenging um, the challenging uh, power of the concept. Uh, Felix. Uh, yes, I, I I think that uh, uh, the um, there there are several challenges. Uh, what um, we saw recently in the, uh, our office is called international design because in a way we thought that. Uh, um, we will be turning into a very uh, open-minded uh, uh, international world. But as the last 20 years shows, there's a huge increase of kind of national identities. And, and, and uh, so it has been actually, it's a new challenge uh, for Dutch people to actually sell themselves and people will be able to get excited with the idea that, that you're going to, bring the, the, the Dutch uh, uh, expertise. So um, that's, uh, there's a, a challenge in the paradigm. So there, they have, there has to be a much more uh, collaborative efforts to do, to do projects. Uh, uh, this project we did in Chanakale, for example, the tower was a, a, a very interesting collaboration between Dutch engineers and Turkish engineers. And in the beginning we thought, out, um, the Dutch engineers will uh, define everything, but no, actually, when we were witnessing the discussion between both of them, we understood that actually they are also in the same level. And then, and the Turkish also were much more expert in uh, how earthquake uh, affects the structure. So actually, you know, like uh, uh, you have to demystify the idea that, uh, that uh, because you live in Europe and you know so much, you think that the rest of the world is like uh, completely ignorant, but actually it's not like that, you know. Like so, things are uh, so the, uh, uh, the 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 opportunities and the challenges are like uh, you really have to be, uh, uh, um, yeah, more uh, uh, as as, as Lara says uh, to really distinguish uh, the the differences with, with in the subtleness. Uh, 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 it's not anymore black and white or Europe versus the rest. I think it's a, uh, there's a lot of privatization. Yeah. It's a question of nuance as uh, Lada was. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a question of nuance like, uh, yeah. So that's that's for sure. Um, and now like one, one thing that I was discussing also the other day with Lada is that I don't I don't feel we are like uh, underprivileged or anything like, uh, I think immigrants in general are underprivileged, but, uh, but we are from a kind of, uh, uh, lucky position that we studied in university when did a master, etc. But uh, most of the, most of the people who who have our passport, at least Mexican, is like they are just uh, you know the the cleaners, etc. So uh, uh, so I cannot uh, I cannot uh, jump into that way. Uh, like uh, I'm I'm lucky, and I have been uh, treated like uh, like an equal here in Holland, like totally like uh, so zero. Zero complaints in that department. Hmm. Maybe that doesn't agree. <laughs> it depends to which school you want to send your child. <laughs> uh huh. And then you uh, then you see that they're like the hidden layers. 
but maybe I would just shortly comment on this uh, 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 something what you said, challenging the paradigm. I think it's also would be quite a nice effort not to replace one paradigm with another. The other, yeah. So that's something like maybe, yeah, what, what, what was also in the talk uh, or, or about the nuances and about the, 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 in that sense, diversity within the diversity, um, within the white supremacy talks, uh, there is a lot of, uh, let's say then, okay, how do we deal without guilt? And then I was thinking, how do I deal with my guilt? But then I realized, you know, Croatia was actually colonized. So if you like are looking quite literally, then you think, okay, uh, so, you know, there is obviously always an opportunity to, to find space for improvement, but these large chunks of like uh, global responsibilities and global allocations of ones or the other, I think that is, uh, that might be even, uh, even dangerous. And I don't know if that's uh, like a qualitative jump. On the other hand, having some kind of quote that is dealing with uh, multi, uh, you know, gender and uh, multi-race uh, within the architectural, both schools and the studios. I think first is the school, and then you know you can go and have your studio. Uh, this is something that uh, I know several schools that I teach at uh, are uh, trying to to increase this this spaces but then we go back to the Montessori and I'm curious about what Felix has to say about that you know because it also comes from who are your uh, um, role models so in the school of my son uh, a lot of teachers a lot of role models are very diverse from uh, gender from race from religion and expressing that and uh, that I find quite uh, enriching so I'm curious what happened. Okay, okay, okay. I will, let's go to the Montessori discussion. Um, I, uh, with my wife, when, uh, when we had uh, to decide where, where, which school our kids should go, we, we thought at the, be the beginning that uh, they should go to a public school uh, because the, uh, um, Rotterdam Montessori school is uh, mostly elite uh, uh, kind of population, mostly blonde, white, whatever. Um, after researching a lot the public schools, we, we understood that, okay, the chances of our kids to join university will decrease by 75, like 20 or 50%, you know, like a, uh, just with this decision, you know, so, so we thought it was, we come from, a con from countries like in Mexico, in which we kind of uh, hate this uh, uh, completely uh, unequal society in which private education is for the for the few and majority has to go for for public and this and it's forever uh, in a kind of uh, uh, disbalance so with we, we, our, our hunch is like we cannot repeat what we hated in our countries but we thought no wait a minute actually we are the underground here we are the we are the immigrants here. So actually we are gonna contribute to the Montessori to actually show them that the Rotterdam actually is not only made of blonde people, you know, like uh, that actually there's, there's some kind of Mexicans as well, you know, like, uh, so we thought, okay. And so that's why we decided to, to, to go for that uh, with, uh, but yeah, we, we were hesitating. Uh, it was a kind of difficult decision, so. <laughs> I don't know if you it's a different Montessori in I know in Amsterdam yeah. as well I mean, no no but more. this is the only one in Amsterdam the other ones are what you are saying uh entirely like quite uh, mono monocultural more or less yeah uh and uh, but this one is a very is a new school and it has uh yeah the history of being the, the uh what it was called the black school or <laughs> Fun. So it has yeah. been, uh, yeah. I think that that's maybe interesting to, because they have an interesting program for with the Coda class and Technasium, and uh, then uh, other children started being interested in the yeah. program. And that's how all children now had the yeah. opportunity. Well, not there's only a few of these classes, but uh, by offering, let's say, contemporary or an interesting uh, things to learn, then that could be a bridge how to create space for uh, yeah. 
for multiple uh, racial and gender uh, pupils. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And talking about yeah, talking about uh, opportunities, equal opportunities. Let's say to 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 everyone. Um, it makes me think of um, the fact that diversity has recently been included as a criteria for the selection of a awarded project by the Stimulating Funds for Architecture, uh, which you probably uh, well know of. Um, so is is this is this the first? Uh, is this a first step in uh, allowing equal opportunities uh, to everyone? How do you how do you perceive it? Uh, I, I want to say that the, the Dutch market is very very difficult compared to other European countries. The other European countries offer a system that uh, of competitions, either restricted or or, or open. Uh, in Germany, are every day there's uh, ten competitions, uh, or France or. Uh, the Netherlands doesn't offer that opportunity. The Netherlands is super close. And then as you have to know a developer, make a partnership with a contractor, like it's, it will never open, you know? And, and this has to do with the, 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 the Netherlands privatize pretty much everything. And so you mm -hmm. don't really have any more, any public tenders of almost anything. So, so uh, we uh, cannot access that work in, in Holland for sure. So, but for example, we apply, uh, uh, we have applied for two, for four competitions in Germany and four times we have been selected. So, okay, Mexican, Turkish applying in Germany, four times selected. The Germans, I for me, is like respect, you know, like a, like a, they don't have, a, they don't care if you are wherever you are from. And it seems like, uh, uh, on the contrary, when we have applied to Belgium, we have applied 10 times, we have never been selected. So, because apparently there's some kind of Belgium, Netherlands kind of, uh, rivalry. So there's all these issues that we don't understand as Mexican and Turkish between in Europe, how they kind of like uh, don't hate or love each other, you know, like, uh, but okay, so um, uh, so that's a bit what I want to say. The other thing is that I saw in the, in, the, in, in the chat, how do you have a kind of policies of inclusivity? Like mm -hmm. we cannot uh, um, really, for example, we get a lot of applications from Turkish uh, 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 people who want to do a practice in our office or from India, we cannot hire them because it's impossible because uh, visa-wise will give us help. And, 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 and the government is, that's, you know, like, so what are we talking about? It's, we cannot really solve this problem. You know, like uh, it, uh, it has to be done in a kind of parliament level, like to allow more interchange of uh, uh, interest to students around the world. There's of course the Erasmus that the Europeans, they treat each other perfectly with each other, but, but shouldn't we allow also students from India to come to Europe to do an internship? Why not? You mm -hmm. know, like why so kind of like, <clears throat> so anyway. <laughs> so there's certainly a paradox in, 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 in the Netherlands becoming more and more uh, diverse and, and super diverse, let's say, and uh, the fact of remaining this closed to um, to opportunities open to others or to yes, they they will be very open and a very strategic. Like the Dutch government will be very open to uh, people from India coming for IT because they have a kind of deficit of IT mm -hmm. and uh, expertise. But mm -hmm. that's it. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so it's like no, why don't you let? Uh, 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 but anyway, this is something that is about policy and it's of course mm -hmm. beyond us. But uh, 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 yeah, I just want to mention that. Yeah. We have a, a, a question uh, from the Q&A by uh, one of my colleagues from the CRC, Jorn, who asked, uh, how truly site-specific can you build a design when you work international? How do you relate to local architectural identities or histories? Is it conflicting when your own studio identity has been mixed, for instance, Dutch, Turkish, Mexican, and you build in Spain, for instance, or is that a benefit? So is that an opportunity or a challenge? <laughs> Very interesting. Is that a, uh, okay, maybe we both answer, but um, um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of uh, what the diagram I showed in the beginning and also with Lara, like we are not for or against that. We are like the generation of the, and, and you know, like, so we, we love Barragan, 
at the same time, we love Rem Cojas, you know, like, uh, but when Rem Cojas visits uh, Mexico, he doesn't want to see Barragan because for him, he's like, that's nostalgic and uh, he doesn't want that, you know. Uh, but we, we, uh, we both like, we like both, you know, like, uh, you know, so we don't have these uh, 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 limitations. So it's, 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 it's quite interesting, you know, like uh, that we are able to uh, uh, kind of DJ or mix these mm-hmm. kind of uh, things that uh, 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 we are able to, for example, I, I work for Kalach in Mexico, some Mexican actor somehow connected to Barragan as a kind of gener- generation. So he's playing with light and textures and stuff. But when I arrived to Holland in the Berlak, everything was about datascapes and, you know, like Lara remembers very well, you know, like everything was numbers and, and, and uh, concepts and massing and, and what, can you mix both? Yes, I think it's, it's possible. And, and, you, and you can have this mixture of identities, but I also wanna be a bit uh, um, more distant because as I mentioned before, uh, yes, we know Mexican architecture, we, I love Aragon, but I also love Rican, and I also love Le Corbusier, and I also love Mies van der Rohe. And I, like, why do I have to kind of choose? Like, you know, like, I don't want to choose, you know, like, and, and, uh, and I feel a bit uh, like it's, it's a bit, uh, 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 it's a bit uh, um, a it's tragedy easy. that when, yeah. when uh, for example, very recently, they, uh, a jury asked me, uh, for uh, to confirm or not to give a prize to a, a, a Mexican architect that I admire a lot, Ro- Rosana Montiel. And uh, when they were asking me uh, uh, about her work, I was like trying to convince them, like, it's super good, you know, super interesting. And, uh, and they were like, okay, well, which project? And I was like, that project. And they will open the picture and they will just look at the, at the, at the project of Roxana. And actually they were, it was very like, uh, that, like the Smithsons, you know, like, few columns, two beams, you know, like, and, and they were like, yeah, but is that interesting? Yeah, it's super interesting. But for them, it's like, no, but where is the Mexican identity? You know, like, so they didn't give it mm-hmm. to them because mm-hmm. they were really wanted to exotize, you know, like to make a exotic mm-hmm. uh, Mexican architect, female should do something folkloric or whatever, you know, like, no, she's not folkloric. She's like super sharp, you know, like. So. Is, there, is there still even actually a, a relevance of having a, a national national representation? Like I, I, I just think of the the Venice Architecture Biennale to which you, you are collaborating, uh, LADA, um, and it's very much the, 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 the theme, uh, how will we live together is very much uh, tied to what we are discussing now, I think, and, and the Dutch Pavilion um, uh, with his, uh, with its, uh, exhibition titled "Who Is We?" Um, asks asks yeah so who, who, who is the the collective we? Is there a collective we? And 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 I thought with this super super diversity and ever increasing uh, uh, diversity, is there even um, relevance uh, today of uh, speaking of, of 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 thinking of architecture in terms of national representation? Well, that's a, that's a very vast question. So uh, we have like just a few minutes left, but uh, national identities and borders and so they have created a lot of trouble and pain. So somehow conceptually, I would be kind of interested if that uh, concept could uh, over a period of time uh, somehow soothen uh, or just embrace multiple uh, identities, uh, what also Felix is saying. Mm. And uh, so maybe to just shortly come back to the question of your colleague uh, about site specific. I don't know, that's also somehow requires a certain humbleness and time investment if you would want to make something site specific. And at the same time, what Felix is saying, you know, it doesn't, uh, you don't need to uh, belittle or think for yourself of what local or site specific is, because people in Cairo or in Mexico City, you know, there is like 21st century everywhere. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, some places are uh, really interesting, and maybe in a certain sense, uh, we really need to learn. We can learn from the rest of the world. So uh, the world is somehow being imploding or, or stretching. Europe is, in that sense, I think really not anymore the center because they're really powerful and interesting voices 
from the African continent, from Asia. And uh, so going there to uh, do something site specific is also like paying an homage and learning. So as at the time, a lot of people were making pilgrimage to the Netherlands to collaborate with the current uh, forces. But now people go to Studio Mumbai to you know, craft the beams and uh, stuff like that. There is uh, indeed Roxanne in Mexico, really interesting work. And I mean, I, it's uh, ungrateful to mention some people because there's many, many people, which is also very good. There is also tendency for uh, several, or at least uh, to my interest, uh, uh, sub-Saharan African women architects. There are several who run their offices and they're doing really well and making really uh, great stuff, which I think 20 years ago, it would have been a real researcher who would know what is happening there. So in that sense, I think it's slightly uh, more opening. And, and uh, stimulating forms is uh, playing a uh, good role in that, what you were mentioning. I don't know mm -hmm. about that particular call, but uh, I think it's uh, worthy to also put a little bit of this quota <laughs> on the diversity. Yeah. Positive yeah. discrimination, you mean? Pardon? Positive discrimination? Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, because then you then you then you create some. Uh, uh, if it's not meant to last, then it it is not meant to last. But somehow I think that it's would be interesting, now... like a like a speed day between uh, Dutch developers meets the foreign architect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what we have to do. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I've taken some some notes. Um, do you think this you were you were um, just mentioning it, Lada? This uh, return to um, the reality of making and craftsmanship and 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 materiality. Do you think it's a it's a it's a channel to connect? more um, more efficiently with multiple identities and multiple ways of, of doing. I guess it's a channel uh, uh, amongst many others, but one that is particularly uh, explored um, uh, today. And all, it, it also reminds me of what you were saying in the beginning, Felix, uh, your 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 image of the the super uh, the superhero, the super Sudaka hero. Um, uh, which which uh, which plays a multiplicity of roles of uh, which uh, embodies a multiplicity of actors and of identities and refuses specialization in the um, yeah yeah I mean th this is one of the also the comments that uh, um, that that mentions that that the super Dutch soup is it a bit uh, uh, in fact a kind of a genius super figure uh, uh, and and the first thing we are we're doing with Superzak is making fun of that you know like uh, those, uh, uh, it's uh, it was the yeah the power of the uh, of the of diversity uh, 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 for us was uh, was really interesting like uh, it was not a it was not really a, it was not opposed we were like so much in, in uh, learning from each other that uh, uh, these uh, whatever seven or eight square sudak as we were at the Berla at the time mm -hmm. that uh, that it was uh, it was quite amazing to 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 join all these forces and and, and still we are together huh, after twenty years uh, so um, yeah that a bit uh, uh, I don't even know if even the Dutch uh, 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 believe that uh, in this lonely heroic figure anymore it's a, it's so passe no i think <laughs> i mean the only thing we can do is to make fun of it i mean <laughs> i don't know well yes and no the, because the, uh, no, yeah <laughs> but the terms the terms that we are using to speak of, uh, of this reality is even the title of this talk super dutch super dutchness and, and and super diversity like lada was saying earlier maybe is there a dan danger of, of replacing one one dominant paradigm by by another what those terms uh, well um, i don't think so because it's like uh, uh like it's like postmodernism like like the modernity <laughs> was like the heroic thing you know like postmodernity was not to replace 
the other one with it was like no we are yeah. just gonna make fun of it you know like uh and and like uh like uh in and you see that in in, in music or in, in whatever you know like uh, you are able to mix anything you kind of demonumentalize the the how can that become a monument well that would be a bit weird no that uh that uh that's why we have this kind of that's what i put this kind of uh, last life for us is like okay we have gonna around crockies for us like doesn't matter you know like uh like uh, take it easy <laughs> like, but but recognition is something that i find it uh, quite quite intriguing you know like uh, still the, the epicenter of recognition not only access to job of recognition is pretty much european dominated you know like so mm -hmm. from el croquis to the uh, or or american uh, the prisker prize whatever still very very much connected to to who is in power and mm -hmm. uh and they are trying to now within those uh, recognition structures they're trying to be more inclusive etc and i i'm not going to reveal who told this to me but uh, a kind of famous mm -hmm. architect he was the very disappointed that the, the Prisker uh, was awarded to some guy from Chile. What's his name anyway? You know, like uh, Aravena or whatever, you know, like uh, just because he's from Latin America, they give it to him and they will never give it to me because I'm blonde and European. I was like, oh my God, you know, like. like that uh, reversal like, of uh, so, I don't know. So actually, okay, so we have to go back. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if, if Lada had a last comment because I see I see time is uh, flying yeah. back and we, we... <laughs> no, just I mean this I thoroughly enjoyed this and it was really pleasant atmosphere. Only one comment, Emil, if I uh, realize you said that uh, would you would we go back to making? I don't think we need to go back anywhere because this is the 21st century. so uh, but maybe to reconnect to different flows yes, that's uh, what, is, yeah. I yeah. didn't mean going back, but re yes, reconnect with with some dimensions that I've been uh, maybe more left out in the yeah, yeah, I think things. that would be quite good. But of course, that's also connected to the policies. So I think uh, I would think it would be interesting if there would be more opportunities if Felix and me, you know, could have the chance to also engage uh, to uh yeah either fabricate or somehow uh, other than teaching uh be engaged in the uh, architectural uh, production uh, mm -hmm. within the netherlands mm -hmm. and um, so that would be in the welcome the <laughs> policies <laughs> not only for the two of us because i think we are actually doing okay but like for many people who could contribute in making this cyber, super diversity of a certain quality. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think we have uh, just touched upon uh, the the tip of the iceberg uh, um, in relation to this uh, debate or, or, or conversation. But um, thank you uh, very much to you both, to Felix and to Lada for for being with uh, me and with us uh, today. And um, next week you can register for the sixth uh, talk of the series um, already um, via the CRC website. And we will have a concluding talk as well uh, on June 24th, uh, in which, um, which you are totally welcome to, to, to assist Lara and Felix, in which we will uh, try to bring together all the um, all the outcomes uh, that we have collected from, from the, the series of talks. Um, so thank you once again thank you. very much. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you everyone, uh, all the attendees uh, on Zoom and on uh, YouTube for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.